Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Kadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially to Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai for giving us this knowledge, this truth, especially in the times we're in. So I've been sitting here debating on what title I should give this video. Hopefully this video will be edifying to you brothers out there that are the household of faith, that honestly and sincerely believe in this truth. I guess I'm going to call this video, We Take Praises with a Grain of Salt Until Yahweh Shai puts the crowns on our heads we take praises that's praises from men with a grain of salt until Yahweh Shai places the crowns on our heads and uh, like I said I've been sitting there meditating on the title and I think I think that's when the praises that men give other men I think that's when they really count if those men ultimately receive the crown on their heads that is promised to us by Yahweh Shai and by scripture. We know that there's a day coming where Yahweh Shai will place the crowns on the heads of the chosen elect. So our reasoning is this, that we don't take or we don't put much stock in the praises of men for the for the, you know for the works that we do which really as it is written the scriptures say say we are unprofitable servants because we have done that which we're supposed to do the works that we're doing we're supposed to do it nevertheless there's there are those that are filled with praise well we got you know we got a, a news for you we begin to fill the pastor on down and I know I speak for him as well as Elder Apostle Ramlob and uh, the bishops of uh, Connecticut and like men. When we don't put too much stock in those praises, hence the title, we take it with a grain of salt, until Yahweh Shai places those crowns on our heads. And that's when all the praise will be worthy. Because until Yahweh Shai puts a crown on our heads, to us the praises don't mean a thing. We're just doing what we're supposed to do. And on top of that, as it is written, we are to say we are unprofitable servants because we've done that which we're supposed to do. So if you have that kind of mindset, that's a mindset of humility. Now, what inspired me to do this video was a, a link that was sent to me by um, Elder Apostle Ramlob. I guess it's a video that this guy, Focab Malone, put up. Bear with me for a minute. This guy, Vocab Malone, put up a video. I believe he, he had a question. Bear with me for a minute. Yeah. The question is, is this idolatrous? Take the poll below. So I'm going to play this video. I don't have to tell you who these individuals are, what Israelite group they're a part of. But um, like the question asked, is this idolatrous? Take the poll below. So let's check it out. Our general, our leader, our prophet, a spiritual father, and our brother. Each of us in leadership have prepared some words that we'd like to share with you. I remember how awestruck I was when I first met you in person. Celebrity shock, I guess. Celebrity shock, because I knew I wasn't worthy to approach the table and say, Ms. Protector, a provider for the nation of Israel, that's who you are. Some people argue whether he's Elijah or whether he's Peter in the spirit, we don't know. 
only the Lord knows. But what we can tell you is you are somebody special. You are somebody special. You are worthy of the title. You are worthy of leading the nation. It is the general in God's army in this time. And what I personally feel is that he is one of the elect that God is waiting on to be sealed before he brings the boom. Brothers, we are an army. I hope y'all understand that. The cadences, the military order, the ranking system, everything we do. It's resemblance of an army. And every army has a what, brothers? A lieutenant. I gotta stop it there because he didn't come up he didn't come up with the caden the cadences, the military order, the structure. That goes back to one West 125th Street. So for him to sit there and soak that all in, that's totally disingenuous. Now how do I know? Because I was back there at the school. And I remember the cadences. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think Elder Pastor helped put those cadences, you know, the marching and the um, Maya Alanawa. And I could be wrong, but I do remember Pastor had his own brand of cadences. Because like I said, I was part of his camp. And he can correct me if I'm wrong. But... Um, I do remember the cadences and I, well, the military structure that came from One West, the heads of One West. And um, that goes back to One West 125th Street. Okay, so he didn't, he didn't come up with that. All he's doing is, uh, all he's doing is um, continuing the legacy that he learned from One West 125th Street. That's all he's doing. So let's move on. And has a general. That's why I said the name General Nathania Alaga is befitting of this man. And I'm pretty sure that every term general again goes back to One West. The structure that they had at One West. All right. Bishop Nathaniel didn't come up with that. Now you notice the, the uh, I'm calling what he is, a sycophant. You notice the sycophant said Nathanielaga. Now, just like Elder Apostle Ramab said in his in his uh, note when he sent me this link, I thought that was Ebonics. Nathanielaga. I thought that was Ebonics. Oh, so now he's General Nathanielaga now. Okay, so I guess he's not Bishop Nathaniel anymore. He's General Nathanielaga now. Hmm. Okay, so here we go with another change. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Let's move on. Where everybody would agree. We salute you, General Nathania Oliver. Shalom. Okay, so it's General Nathania Oliver. Even though he was the same guy who said that we don't have the real Hebrew. Because Nathania Oliver, again, that goes back to the main school, that was his name when he came into school, Nathani Alaga, uh, which we believe goes back to ancient Hebrew, but he said that it was Ebonics. In other words, it was not real Hebrew. That's what he said. It was Ebonics. But now I guess he's changed his mind. I guess it's real Hebrew again. I mean, this dude is full of changes. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. Salute. But one thing that stays the same, the name of the Heavenly Father stays hidden, and especially his only begotten son. But Nathaniel Agar, which is ancient Hebrew, right? That that prevails. You see? <laughs> that prevails. Salute. Bishop Nathaniel is the father every man in this womb wanna have. I didn't know how to be a father until I met you. I didn't know how to be a husband until I met you. I didn't know how to be a friend until I met you. Bishop, I take out my head out to you, brother, because no man can do it like you. And Bishop Netanyahu is what you call the perfect example to Israel. Bishop, a lot of great prophets in the Bible. We have a lot of great forefathers. A lot. And today, tonight, I'm 
putting Bishop Nathaniel in the midst of them. Their prophet is Bishop Nathaniel. All of us here have his spirit in us. Wow. Our general, our leader. Yeah, that all of us here have it. Wow. So the one when I saw this video, right, the one word that came to mind is sycophants. Those guys, they're nothing but sycophants. Now let's take a look at the definition of sycophants. Sycophant. It says a person who acts obsequiously, 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 I hope I'm pronouncing the word correctly. <laughs> this is my first time seeing that word. Matter of fact, let's look that word up. Let's look that word up. I am intrigued by that word. And then we learn how to say it. Obsequious. Obsequiously. Okay, now I know how to say it. Obsequious. Okay, obedient or attentive to an excessive or servile decree. Decree. Let's read that again. Obedient or attentive. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, seemed, they seemed and sound, sounded like they were quite obedient and attentive. To praising this guy obedient or attentive to an excessive or servile degree and that is what obsequious obsequious now I know how to say the word all right so again now we know what the word obsequious number one we know how to say it number two obsequiously a person who acts obsequiously that's a person who's very attentive and very obedient kind of like a, a puppy dog right a puppy dog a person who acts obsequiously towards someone important or they deem important in order to gain advantage and that is the very definition of a sycophant right so you heard all that empty flattery and, and praise and the reason why I say am I hating no I'm not hating the reason why I say it's empty flattery and praise because it doesn't mean anything until Yahweh Shai puts that crown on your head. All right, as it is written, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. We have not endured to the end yet, but it is what it is. Now, my thing is this if Bishop Nathaniel was a man of sense, right, he would denounce all that nonsense. Let me give you an example of a man who did have sense and unlike Bishop Nathaniel, actually did things worthy of being praised, yet this man had an attitude of humility. Okay, so let's take a uh, look at the story here. Now, I've done videos on this man before. I find him to be a, an inspirational individual in history, all right, because his act of humility and the words that he said so without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, the name of the story is King Canute on the Seashore. And this is by James Baldwin, the Book of Virtues. And indeed, humility is a virtue. And if there's one thing that this story teaches is humility. All right, so it says, Long ago, England was ruled by a king named Canute. Like many leaders and men of power, Canute was surrounded by people who were always praising him. Hmm, does that sound familiar? <laughs> now, like I said, unlike that guy, Canute actually deserved the, the, the you know, the, the praises that he was getting. But even he got tired of it. And it seems this guy, who never really did anything to get all that praise that he's getting, it seems he didn't, he never gets tired of it. You know who I'm talking about. Because he's not a man of sense. Canute was a man of sense, as we're about to read. And I especially like the way Canute taught those sycophants, those flatterers, a lesson. Okay? He taught them a lesson they would never forget. So let's read. It says, Like many leaders and men of power, Canute was surrounded by people who were always praising him. Every time he walked into a room, the flattery began. <laughs> 
<laughs> you are the greatest man that ever lived, one would say. Wow. O king, there can be there can never be another as mighty as you. Another would insist. Your Highness, there is nothing you cannot do, someone would smile. Does that sound familiar? Kind of reminds you of what we just saw, right? Great Canute, you are the monarch of all, another would sing. Damn, even singing. Nothing in this world dares to disobey you. Now, this is good. It, it comes. The king was a man of sense. The king was a man of sense. And he grew tired of hearing such foolish speeches. <laughs> Let's read that again. The king was a man of sense. And he grew tired of hearing such foolish speeches. I got, I ain't gonna, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, man, as I was playing that clip, uh, I, I was getting sick, okay? <laughs> anyway, one day he was walking by the seashore and his officers and courtiers, courtiers were with him, praising him as usual. Canute decided to teach them a lesson. So you say I am the greatest man in the world, he asked them. O king, they cried, there never has been anyone as mighty as you, and there never be anyone so great ever again. And that's a hell of a praise. <laughs> and you say all things obey me, Canute asked? Absolutely, they said. The world bows before you and gives you honor. I see, the king answered. In that case, bring me my chair, and we will go down to the water. At once, your majesty. They scramble to carry his royal chair over the sands. <laughs> bring it closer to the sea, Canute called. Put it right here, right at the water's edge. He sat down and surveyed the ocean before him. I notice the tide is coming in. Do you think it will stop if I give the command? His officers were puzzled, but they did not dare say no. I mean, damn, how far does their flattery go? How far does their phoniness go? <laughs> you got to watch out for people like that, man. Okay, you got to watch out for people like that. That's why it's not good to get all that praise. Okay? His officers were puzzled, but they did not dare say no. Give the order, O great king, and it will obey. One of them assured him. Very well. See, cried Canute, I command you to come no further. Waves, stop your rolling. Surf, stop your pounding. Do not dare touch my feet. He waited a moment quietly and a tiny wave rushed up the sand and lapped at his feet. <laughs> How dare you, Canute shouted. Ocean, turn back now. I have ordered you to retreat before me and now you must obey. Go back. And in answer, another wave swept forward and curled around the king's feet. The tide came in, just as just as it always did. Yeah, the tide wasn't afraid of the mighty Canute. <laughs> the water rose higher and higher. Now, mind you, right, this story is heavy because one of the ways, and the Heavenly Father speaks about this, that he shows his power is in the tide. Let's take a quick look at that scripture real quick. All right. Let me see if I can find it. Because, you know, the ebb and the flow of the tide shows the great power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? This is something that they created. 
And if, if anything shows, you know, people that say there, there is no God, how do you explain the tide, the ebb and the flow of the tide? That's why in the Bible it says, he that say there is no God is a fool, Psalm 14 and 1. Now, let me see if I can find the scripture. Now, I know it's somewhere in Jeremiah. Uh, yeah, here it is right here. Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, the 22nd verse. Check this out. It says, well, let me start the 21st verse so we get the whole idea. It says, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Now, again, this scripture is heavy because as I finish read the story of King Canute, he reserved his praise for the Heavenly Father. In other words, his fear was to the Heavenly Father. And at the same time, he taught his men a lesson. Okay, let's go back and read it. Jeremiah 5 and 22 Fear ye not me, saith the Lord, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea, huh? by a perpetual decree. Yeah, and not even King Canute could stop it. With all his commanding sitting on his royal chair, he could not stop the, the uh, tide from flowing to the surface. <laughs> Because he he didn't place he didn't place that uh, uh, ebb and flow of the tide he didn't place that by a perpetual decree it wasn't him that did it it was the heavenly father Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai that did it okay so again fear ye not me saith the Lord will ye not tremble at my presence which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, by a perpetual decree. Ever since it was established, it's been going on and on and on through the through the history of time, man. All right? The ebb and flow of the tide. Right? So if that don't show you the power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, I don't know what will. Okay? This has been a perpetual decree. Anytime you go down to the sea, you're always going to see the ebb and flow of the tide. You're always going to see that. Like it says here, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it. And though the waves there have tossed themselves, yet can they not prevail. Right, because they're only going to go so far and then they go right back out to the sea. Ebb and flow ebb and flow right yet they cannot yet can they not prevail though they roar yet can they not pass over it so the lord said this to the prophet jeremiah so that people with some common sense like our boy canute people with some common sense will consider that and and be in awe of the mighty power of the Heavenly Father. And of course, His only begotten Son. That's why it's written. Okay? So, going back to the story, we can pick it up from here. And in answer, another wave swept forward and curled around the king's feet. The tide came in just as it always did. Remember the scripture? A perpetual decree. The water rose higher and higher. It came up around the king's chair. So the more commands Canute gave, the, high, the higher the water raised up. Check that out. And wet not only his feet, but also his robe. His officers stood before him alarmed and wondering whether he was not mad. So you mean to tell me his officers couldn't tell him, okay, uh, you've proved your point. They just kept the flattery game going on. <laughs> Again, you gotta watch. You gotta watch out for people like that. That means they're not honest. That means they're not going to be honest with you. And it's really pretty much that's how it is over there at the IUIC, and that's why Vocab put in the in the uh, comment that he put is this idolatrous. And I have to say yes, 
they're making an, an, a god or an idol out of this man, so-called Bishop Nathaniel, who's now, I guess now, is General Nathaniel Alaga. They're making an idol out of this guy. Okay? But that's to his own detriment, which proves he doesn't have any sense. At least Canute had sense. He said, I got to put a stop to this flattery. And he used an excellent, uh, he used an excellent um, technique, for lack of a better word. He used an excellent technique to do it. Okay, and we're reading about it, and we can learn a lot from this. Anyway, let me keep reading. Well, my friends, Canute said, it seems I do not have quite so much power as you would have me believe. Perhaps you have learned something today, as we all have learned something today. Perhaps now you will remember there is only one king who is all-powerful. Yeah, just like we read in Jeremiah. Fear ye not me, I'm the one, the heavenly father Yahweh. This is him saying this through the prophet Jeremiah. I'm the one who placed the sand uh, as, a bound for, as a boundary for the sea and kept the ebb and flow of the tide as a perpetual decree. I, Yahweh, am the one that have done that. And by that, you know my power. That's basically what the Heavenly Father was saying by the prophet Jeremiah. And we honor the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and we also honor the Son. Because you can't honor the Father if you don't honor the Son. So that's why we honor Yahweh Bar Shem Shai. They're worthy of praise and honor. Again, we're really not worthy of praise and honor because we're doing what we're supposed to do. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to have the, the exact opposite. We're supposed to have the spirit of humility, saying we are unprofitable servants because we've done that which we're supposed to do. You see? But let's finish read about King Canute. So let's read that part again. It says, well, my friends, Canute said, it seemed, well, my friend, let me read it right. Well, my friends, Canute said, it seems I do not have quite so much power as you would have me believe. Perhaps you have learned something today. Perhaps now you will remember there's only one king who is all powerful. And it, and it is he who rules the sea. And we just learned that in the book of Jeremiah 5 and 22. Well, beginning at the 21st verse, going into the 22nd verse. And it is he who rules the sea and holds the ocean in the hollow of his hand. I suggest you reserve your praises for him. The royal officers and courtiers hung their heads and looked foolish. <laughs> and, and the day is coming when those guys that were, that were, <laughs> that were praising, uh, shall I say, uh, General Nathaniel Alaga or Bishop Nathaniel, whatever, whatever you like, whatever you choose, the day is coming when those dudes are going to look foolish. They're going to hang their heads and look foolish. All that empty flattery they were giving this guy. Especially when the MOTB is made mandatory. All right, that's the linchpin right there. When that MOTB is made mandatory and all hell breaks loose, that group that built its house on sand, that thing is going to come apart. It's going to fall apart like a house of cards, man. Guaranteed. Okay? Anyway, let's re read on. It says, the royal officers and courtiers hung their heads and looked foolish. I mean, what a lesson Canute played on them, man. And some say Canute took off his crown soon afterward and never wore it again. Now, this was an actual man that lived. And like I said, unlike General Bishop Nathaniel, Nathaniel Alaga, <laughs> Canute actually did things worthy of being praised. He was actually in battle and and so forth and so on. He actually led armies and so forth and so on. Okay? So in conclusion, let me go to the scripture here, the book of Romans 12 and 3. This is why this is written. Romans 12 and 3. You don't want to be in that kind of position. No, sir. You know, a lot of Israelites say that we're jealous of this guy. Oh, no. I would not want to be in that position. No way. Okay, <laughs> no way, no how. All right, Romans 12 and 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, there's that word grace again, because that's really what we're under. 
For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And, and Canute displayed that. Canute showed that. He was getting all that empty flattery and empty praise around from his men. And he said, man, I got to teach these guys a lesson. All right. And he did that, man. Again, Romans 12 and 3, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. And that's King Canute demonstrated that. He demonstrated thinking soberly, which is another word for soberly is wisely. What you just saw in that clip, that was not wise at all. Really, that was pure stupidity. That was foolishness. Okay, but... I guess that suffices that group. It is what it is. But to think soberly according as the Heavenly Father have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Another reason why we don't, uh, we don't feel comfortable getting all that praise is because we didn't make ourselves what we are. The Apostle Paul said, by the grace of Yahweh Shimei Shai, I am what I am. So all of us in this ministry begin to fell the positive and down by the grace of of Yahweh Shem Yashai, we are what we are. So we tend to have uh, a, um, an attitude of humility towards the position that we're in. There's a scripture in the Apocrypha where it says, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And again, King Canute demonstrated that. Yeah, he's a great king, but he got tired of the flattery because he was a man of sense. He was a man of common sense. All right, so I believe that's all I have to say. Hopefully you were edified by this lesson. It's really a lesson in humility. The key to being in this knowledge, being in this truth, is humility. As it is written, a broken and contrite heart the Heavenly Father will not despise. A broken and contrite heart. Contrite, the word contrite means humble. Look it up. A broken and contrite heart, the Heavenly Father will not despise. All right, neither will His Son. So the best way to be is broken and contrite in this ministry. And the only time, me personally, speaking on my behalf, the only time I, I think praise will really be worthy, at least for me, is when Yahweh Shai places that crown on my head, if I'm worthy. When He places that crown on my head, then I can really accept that praise. But for now, I don't think I'm worthy of no praise. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. All right. Like the scriptures say, say we are unprofitable servants because we've done that which we're supposed to do. All right. So on that note, on to the next video.